What's up, everybody? Back with our weekly installation of our NFL picks. We're talking about each and every game in NFL Week 11. Let's jump right into it. And as always, quick reminder to like the video if you're enjoying the content. Give a, the channel a subscription if you're enjoying it. And leave in the comment section anything, any thoughts or questions that you got for Week 11 here. Yeah, let's jump right into it. Uh, I've got four more teams on bye weeks. Uh, heading into week 11, so we have the Cardinals off, the Panthers off, the Giants, and the Bucks. We'll just start this one off with our Thursday night matchup with the 7-3 and three Commanders going to Philly to play the 7-2 and two Eagles and an NFC East matchup that could end up deciding this division in the long run. So a huge game here on Thursday night um, with big playoff implications. The Eagles... Uh, as you mentioned last week, I mean, that defense is starting to come into its own with Fangio. They blew out the Dakless Cowboys. So we saw Cooper Rush start for a little bit. They turned to Trey Lance. But that defense forced five takeaways this week, and it looks like they're really coming to their own. It was a favorable matchup. But nonetheless, um, the Eagles are heading in the right direction. And the Commanders, they lost a really close one. Uh, to the Steelers at home, they could have pulled that one out, but um, not Jaden Daniels' best game. Again, not an easy matchup either, but he only threw uh, 50% completion in that one. So two teams that are performing very well this year. Eagles kind of expect a little bit more, but where are you leaning um, in this divisional matchup with the Eagles as three and a half point favorites at home? So just saying they're a little bit better than commanders on a neutral side. Yeah, and I agree with the spread in saying that the Eagles are the better team by a slight margin here. And I'm taking the Eagles to win this game as well, sticking with the momentum that you've seen both offensively and defensively from that team. I think the big thing here for me is kind of what you saw out of Jaden Daniels last week. I, I don't think you can take much from this Eagles win against the Cowboys just because uh, the Cowboys are so pitiful, even with, without Dak Prescott. Um, for me, you know, Jaden Daniels going up against a much uh, – much improved Steelers defense to a lot of the defenses that he's been seeing this year. And you, you saw him start to drop off a little bit. You mentioned his completion percentage. Um, it, it was a very close game and he still looks solid. He just didn't look like the Jay Daniels that we were used to seeing. I think he's going to go up against another really tough defense here and another really big test this week uh, as this game has big implications for the rest of the season for both these two teams. I definitely trust the Eagles with a more, tenured roster and tenured quarterback at that and a better defense as well. So I'm here with the Eagles. I think they're going to win this game by more than three and a half points, probably by a touchdown is my guess. I just like uh, where this defense is playing in Philadelphia and the, the Jalen Hurts over Jaden Daniels quarterback matchup, uh, just really because I think it's going to be a big game under the lights on a national stage. And I think that maturity from Jalen Hurts is going to be an X factor here as well. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm with you on the Eagles here. I um, think they're the, the more well-built team at this moment. Jaden Daniels could eventually surpass the, the Eagles down the line, but I think it's just too early in his career with the mm -hmm. way this defense is playing, Fangio. Um, and then even Saquon. I mean, there's just a team that can beat you in multiple ways. I think they could lean on the run game a little bit here against just a, a thinner commander's defense. I mean, I'm impressed the defense has still been able to play as well as they have. I know their advanced stats grades or grades aren't the best, but they at least do do a good enough job to keep them in. Mm -hmm. We'll move on. Uh, we got another divisional matchup this time heading to the NFC North. We got the six and three Packers heading to Chicago to play the now four and five Bears. Um, Bears now losers of three straight and really losing all that momentum that they somewhat built in the start of the year. Uh, getting that offense going and then definitely relying on the defense. And the Packers are coming in hungry. They're off of a bye. Uh, LaFleur hasn't historically been great off the bye, only two and four in those direct games after. But uh, nonetheless, they are 28 and 11 in the second half of the season after the bye. So, I mean, this is a team that picks it up as the year goes on. Uh, a younger and newer team, I think the Packers are going to continually get better the season progresses and they just had that really bad loss to the Lions too. So, I mean, they're hungry. I think this six and a half point spread on the road is definitely justified for them. And the way the Bears have been playing the last two weeks, just not even eclipsing 10 points. 
Um, it's hard to lean with the Bears in this. But I'm on the Packers minus six and a half. Um, I think you're uh, you're on the same boat here, but let's hear your thoughts. Yeah, I'm with you. And it's hard to really evaluate the Bears without being too overreactive to their last couple of performances. But it's hard to believe that this Bears team can cover six and a half points against most teams in the NFL. They can't do so against the Patriots at home. This offense is completely anemic at this point um, with, you know, you, you hear a lot of the media pundits and analysis criticizing Shane Waldron and some of the schemes, concepts, and personnel that uh, this Bears offense has been employing. And it's just not translating. Whatever is being done is, is not translating to success as a whole unit and certainly not for Caleb Williams. And, you know, another big part of this, too, and a big contributor is how banged up this Bears offensive line really is. They're going on their third, fourth string offensive linemen in some cases. And especially when you're going up against a healthy, fresh Packers team coming off a bye, you know, that's going to have some big implications as well. I'm with you. The Packers seem rule the Bears as they have the last 10 years. Uh, I think Jordan Love uh, continues the Packers ownership of the Bears and this is really when the Bears gone the season starts too. They got all divisional games, so six divisional games. Again, the 49ers and the Seahawks. I'm not sure Bears will win another game this year. And it'll be lucky if they cover six and a half in any of those games too. It's probably it's definitely an overreaction um and hyperbole, but I don't think they're gonna cover the six and a half in this game, uh, especially with the way they've been playing late and the Packers come off the bye. So give me Packers minus six and a half. Yeah, I mean, Caleb got sacked nine times uh, against the Patriots. That, it's not like the Patriots have a great defense or anything to write home about. Yeah, yeah it's not going to get fixed in a week, and not against this well-rested Packers defense. Yeah. It's... All right, moving along, I believe our largest spread of the week, but we got the 2-8 and eight Jaguars, um, rough loss uh, against the Vikings. Um, only putting up seven points in that game. And then the Lions, they're playing on Sunday night currently, um, down big at the half. But this game is in uh, Detroit. And, I mean, like I said, it's the biggest spread here. Do you have any particular read um, based on these two teams? You know, especially if the the game trend continues and the Lions lose this next game, um, I – feel pretty favorable in their ability to bounce back and take it to a, a very much inferior team with this Jacksonville Jaguar squad. You know, I'm assuming that Trevor Lawrence is going to play this game. Uh, he was trending most of the week in getting a shot to play on Sunday. Ultimately, it was Mac Jones. I have to imagine that a few extra days here uh, implies that Lawrence will be back. But again, I'm not sure it matters too much. I just don't, again, even with Lawrence – this Jaguars team is really looked for and not much that you can point to in this offense that works regardless of who's playing quarterback. Uh, you know, ETN has taken a big step back this year. I think a lot of people expected greater things to come from him. And I think you can say the same thing about Trevor Lawrence and his performance too. This seems like one of those games where the Lions come back and just take it to a much uh, more inferior opponent. I don't imagine that the Jaguars have much time of possession in this game when you're looking at it between the two teams. I think the Lions are going to use Gibbs and Montgomery and run the ball all over them. Uh, not like the Jags have a terrible run defense, but it's certainly not um, above, quite above average. And so I think it's just a classic Lions. We're tough for the new kind of game, run the ball down your throat and win this one by, you know, 40, 40 to 17 type game where they just never take their foot off the gas. I think so, especially if this this trend on Sunday night keeps up and the Lions get blown out. I I see them answering big the following week. Mm -hmm. All right, let's keep it moving. Next game up, we have the two and seven Raiders heading to Miami to play the currently two and six Dolphins. Still have to play here on Monday night, uh, but the Raiders are off of a buy in this one. Um, they're coming in as six and a half point favorite or underdogs, and. I mean, we'll have to see what happens here on Monday night with the Dolphins, but just the way this Raiders team has been, I could see Tua throwing the top off this defense in this mm -hmm. game. Um, the Raiders are off of bye, so that's something to keep in mind with a, a larger spread here. But, but, yeah, I think even if the, the Dolphins lose on Monday night, if they don't, I just think this is a great matchup for them for Tua to get a, a bounce-back game, um, help out Tyreek, get Jalen Waddle's stats back up and kind of 
just put everything back on track. I mean, he's got that contract we've talked about. He's not, they're not going to be able to just flip them really quick. So I think they're still going to be airing it out as the season goes along and try to build any chemistry and salvage this season. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think we're going to see uh, a preview of the capability the Dolphins offense will show off against the Raiders here on Monday night against the Rams. I think you'll see Tua, who's slowly getting more integrated as he's come back from the concussion, uh, start to really work the ball to Tyreek Hill especially, but also looking to see Jalen Waddle get a little more action within this offense as well. I'm with you. You read my mind. I don't think the Dolphins are a terrific football team, and I they're probably below average even at this point with Tua. But I would imagine that you're going to see a heavy dose of the the talent that the Dolphins have at wide receiver. A lot of Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill and HN out of the backfield. And that's just going to be too much for this Raiders team. We've talked time and time again about how they have the worst coverage defense in the NFL. And that seems to come to roost every game they play and really uh, be the true Achilles heel of this team. And against a team like the Dolphins, whose real weapons are in the passing game, I would imagine that the Dolphins win this one and, and cover this six and a half points. You know, that, that's a team with a lot different expectations of the season than the Raiders had. And I think that, that is, that's never lost sight with an organization like that and a head coach like Mike McDaniel. Yeah. And yeah. And not to say like the Raiders are going to just give up on the season. There's still a lot of games to go, but I do think they'll, they'll be more quick to make changes at quarterback, for example, with Minshew, O'Connell, uh, mm -hmm. but the other guys they got there on the roster and just, Whereas, I mean, Tua, like, you know, he's got to be your guy for now, um, barring any other injury. So I, I just, I feel like they got, like, their sides are set a little bit more forward on this season or, or they're on this season where the, the Raiders could be set a little bit forward. Yep. Yeah. But all right, let's move along. We've been on the favorites so far. And then, then this one, we got the currently four and four Rams. Uh, like Roach said, they'll be playing the Dolphins tomorrow night. They're heading to New England to play the three and seven Patriots, who um, just beat the Bears and pretty impressively, depending on where you're holding the Bears and your your current mm -hmm. rankings. But the Patriots offense, I mean, they definitely look better with Drake May. Uh, the team just looks like more committed, uh, like on defensive, offensive ends of the ball. I just feel like there's a little bit more excitement there in New England. But they're coming in as five and a half point dogs at home. Uh, the Rams have been rolling with a healthy wide receiving core. Do you stick with the favorites here, or or do you think there's um, a world where the the Patriots pull this one out? Yeah, the spread's <laughs> intriguing here. But I'll set that aside for a moment. Just talk about the game outright. We talked about it a few weeks back when Cup and Nakua finally came back. Uh, we predicted them, the Rams to start making a little bit of a run. I think it's going to be a close game. And really, in my mind, it's a coin flip here on Monday night, as I think the Dolphins are pretty desperate. No matter what happens Monday night, even off a short week, I do like the Rams to win this game in Foxborough. I think between Kyron, Cup, and Puka, that this team has enough to beat the likes of the inferior, really bottom barrel teams in the NFL. And that's the Patriots right now. Even the Bears, too. The Panthers, the Giants. I think the Rams are in a tier above these teams. You know, even on the road, they're getting five and a half points of favorability here and, you know, showing the true difference in uh, talent on each roster here. I like the Rams to win this game. Spread, I would think a little bit twice about, just given the fact that Drake May has really provided the spark to this team. And you just see more inspired football, which is, I think, the point that you were making just a moment ago. Um, I would think twice. I think I'd stay away from the spread here, but I'm certainly – confident in the Rams winning this game as long as you know nothing crazy happens in terms of injury personnel changes on Monday night here. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm with you on the pick -em. I do think the Rams, Niners, one of those teams will end up winning the, the NFC West over the, the Cardinals, the current leaders. Mm -hmm. But right at the same time, I, the way the Patriots are playing, and I mean, first season, John Mayo is head coach. I mean, it just seems like they're a little bit more inspired. I wouldn't be surprised if they they steal the the spread here at plus five and a half at home. The That's defense is pretty good. good. Um, I mean, they started the season off pretty well and then kind of fell off just a couple of games in. But they're they're back in the middle of the pack in the PFF power rankings, and I mean, they they continue to move up. So they, the defense keeps playing at this level. I think they can cover this one at home. Yeah. Sure. Right. Next up. 
We got the two and seven Browns. They're coming off of a bye and they're heading into New Orleans to play. Now three and seven Saints. We called that one last week. It's just a, a trap line. Uh, no real reason why we love the Saints, but it was just the line didn't make any sense and nice. pulled that one out. So they finally snapped that uh, that losing streak, and uh, I believe was it MVS or I could be wrong. Yeah, no, it was MVS. MVS played great for them and had an incredible game. He he really stepped up and replaced the role that Rashid Shahid was filling in or really created. Um, but in Shahid's absence, you know the speed guy that can really stretch the field. This offense keeps really relying on that. It seems like and. I'll use that as a segue to talk about the Browns. And if they can stop that, I don't think the Saints have a chance. I don't, have a chance. I don't think the Saints will win this game if the Browns can figure out a way to stifle that portion of the Saints offense. You know, that's the really um, – that position, whether it's Shahid or MVS, that's the only thing that's really stretching the field for the Saints offense, especially in Chris Olave's absence. And without that uh, dynamic aspect of the offense, you've seen what the Saints team can do and – what they can do is not too much. And you, that's what uh, really led to, in my mind, that long, the prolonged losing streak that they, they just snapped here. I think the Browns coming off a bye, you know, you've seen some of the magic that Jameis Winston can do in that game against the Ravens where they won. You've seen a lot of the blunders that Jameis Winston can make. Uh, you've seen it in the game right after that and really throughout his whole career that he's one of truly the most turnover prone quarterbacks in football that has played this long. Um, but I think the Browns have a real shot here coming off a bye. If you can get Jameis Winston to just cut down on the turnovers against a, a Saints team here that we've seen isn't very good. Uh, they just had a little bit of spark momentum with the interim head coach. But often, like we see, you get that spark with the interim head coach after a firing and they start to fizzle out and teams return to their true colors. This could be the game for the Saints where that actually happens. You know, it could be in a couple of weeks. Um, but I think it. I like the Browns here to cover this at the very least at plus two and a half off the bye week. Yeah, I'm a, I'm with you here on the spread. And to your same point with the Saints, I mean, we've seen it. They haven't been able to do a lot offensively. And part of that was really the Falcons just not capitalizing this game. For Cousins, no, okay. one interception, no touchdown passes. Um, they moved the ball but didn't finish the drives. And when you're looking at the the PFF defensive rankings, the, the Browns are number nine and the Saints are actually second to last in the league. So. I mean, I do like the Browns here. Um, I think they have more of a, a balanced attack, um, even though with the Saints still having Kamara. But I think they, they could pull out the win on home just solely because their defense is really that much better. Mm -hmm. All right, next up, we got one of the better matchups. We got a few really good games on the slate for this week. But we have the 7-3 and three Baltimore Ravens going to, to Pittsburgh to now play the 7-2 and two Steelers. Ravens just beat the Bengals on Thursday night. Um, so they're going to have a little bit of extra rest heading in this one. And I do think that's accounted for in the spread here. The Steelers just won that close one-point game against the Commanders. Uh, wasn't Russ didn't light it up, but he did do enough in the second half to, to help them pull out that win. Uh, Mike Williams uh, picked up on the trade, ended up scoring the game-winning touchdown. That was just his one catch, but I imagine he gets more involved in that offense as this moves along. But I am a little surprised by the spread here. Um, maybe you're not, but I want to hear your thoughts with the Ravens going as three and a half point favorites on the road. Yeah, the Ravens have definitely been the flashier team this year when compared to the Steelers, but you cannot discredit the Steelers uh, at seven and two with the way they played all year long. Really, their defense has been showing out and much more so than the Ravens do. Uh, Ravens defense has this year. And Russell Wilson, at quarterback, has looked pretty solid in his few starts there. George Pickens has been more integrated in this offense. Uh, but you haven't seen anything fly up the page when you're looking at the Steelers. When you watch the Ravens, it's you know it's a, a lot of guys in their team, but it really is Lamar Jackson. And really, um, it's hard not to turn all your attention to him when he's on the field and has the ball in his hands. Uh, he's the most dynamic player in the NFL and really the most exciting at this point right now. And so I'm not too surprised at the spread because the Steelers um, have played so well this year and it's just all around a great team. But I can see why people would think maybe the Ravens would be favored by more. I personally think the spread is very fair. I think the Steelers covered plus three and a half just because their defense has such a big edge over the Ravens. Although the Ravens have a great personnel on their team, uh, even with Kyle Hamilton hurt as of last week, 
Uh, I think they still have a lot of great guys in the roster, but their defense has not been playing well at all in terms of yards per game and really what they've been allowing to other teams' quarterbacks. I think the Steelers here have a shot to play in a close game against a Ravens team that you know obviously will have a huge. This game will have a huge implication on the division uh, and how these two teams look for the playoffs. I think the Ravens ultimately win the game with how Lamar Jackson is looking, virtually unstoppable, and, and along with Derrick Henry there. But I think the Steelers' defense. Gives them a chance to win this game. And I think it's a close game decided by three points as the Ravens pull away in Pittsburgh. That's my game prediction here. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess it shouldn't be too surprised. Uh, but yeah, get, given everything you just said, I, I'm I'm going to be on the Steelers plus three and a half in this one. I just think it's it's too much for them being at home as well. I mean, you're almost indicating that the Ravens are about a touchdown better, which – they, they could be, but I do think the Steelers' defense is better. The one thing that worries me for sure is that their big portion of their game is built on their pass rush and Lamar being able to negate that to some extent. So we'll see if, if TJ Watt's able to get back there, make the plays, I Smith. Um, it's really going to come down to Lamar Jackson's play for me in this game, but I just I think it's too much for the, the to give for the Steelers here in this one. I'm going to take the plus three and a half and. Seems to be a really low scoring defensive battle. Yeah, it's that Ravens coverage defense that uh, scares me. But the low scoring points, they run the Ravens are the best run defense in football right now. And we know from watching the Steelers, that's not, not real, that's not where their real strengths lie. Um, not that their offense has any tremendous strength, but it's certainly much so in the passing game at this point. Um, I could see the low scoring game too. I think that's. That's a great prediction there. We got the two best tackling teams in the NFL. Uh, yeah. So in these games between these two teams are always tight. It's always closer than expected. A lot of the times you can throw out the record books between uh, Harbaugh and Tomlin. These games are going to be as competitive as they come. And that always for me is leaning towards the home team, especially when they are the underdog in a game like this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is history, but from a right. spread perspective. Lamar, to some extent, you can negate things like that. But moving along, we have the seven and two Vikings going to Tennessee to play the new, the now two and seven Titans. Um, Vikings beat the Jags, but it wasn't one of their best performances, um, at least on the offensive end. And the Titans, they lost by 10 to the Chargers. Um, Darnold threw three picks in that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you? Are you worried this is going to be maybe become a trend for him, or do you think it's more of a fluke? I guess the reason I'm a little bit worried is that that Jacksonville defense is not exactly anything to write home about. I mean, you got a couple of playmakers here and there, but definitely felt uh, forced on Darnold's end and a little bit of flashbacks into some of his prior play. Do you think that can continue heading into this Tennessee game, or are you with the Vikings bouncing back? Yeah, I don't think it's going to continue to be the same magnitude, but I certainly am worried about Sam Darnold and wondering if his play at the beginning of the season was a fluke and a circumstance of a great offense and a great coach here. We know from prior history that Sam Darnold has not been the greatest quarterback in his track record with other teams. And so we're starting to wonder if his true colors are really showing in that game versus Jacksonville. He's going up against a much tougher defense here in the Titans, who are number one in the league in total defense in terms of yards per game, not necessarily points per game, but yards per game. This team is as stingy as they come. And that's saying a lot, given the fact that this Titans team is on defense a lot more than other teams, given the way their offense has produced this season. I think the Vikings will see a step up from last game. I don't think Darnold's going to throw three picks. That's not Sam Darnold. He had a tough game, but I don't think that he's going to be the, the perfect Sam Darnold that we saw in weeks like one through seven. I think I like the Titans plus six and a half here because I really do uh, see their defense playing well. And all it takes from them is to have a little bit more offensive production to stay close in these games. I, I say it's now plus six and a half, but if Sam Darnold and this Vikings offense can get anywhere close to the way they were producing and just get feed the ball to Justin Jefferson a little bit more, which he was a little bit absent in this game against the Jaguars, it wouldn't surprise me to see the Vikings blowing out the Titans as the Titans offense outside of Calvin Ridley now hasn't looked terrific in any aspect of the football game. Yeah, this one's tough because I, I want to I wanna also lean with the Titans plus six and a half, but I feel like I was just with them this last week against the Chargers. Mm-hmm. Um, they couldn't pull it out. 
I do think the the Vikings are a better team than the Chargers right now. And I mean, that's no way to make make the pick here. But I mean, I just don't trust the Titans' offense, like you said. Outside of Calvin Ridley, they don't really score a lot of points. The defense is solid and should give them a chance to stay in it. But uh, I mean, we just saw this last week. I mean, they just held the Jags to seven points. It was Mac Jones, but I don't think the Titans are really implementing that much better of an offense than they just saw. So I do think the Vikings defense is just going to be able to hold the Titans enough uh, to cover this spread. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I agree. But yeah, but yeah, I mean, I'm definitely worried about the Vikings. Like, and then the playoffs. I mean, I know people were all having those conversations. You know, they're going to start facing a real tough divisional schedule too, outside of uh, the Bears. You know, they've already played the the Lions and Packers once. They're going to have both those teams again. Those can be some tough games. The Vikings got to. It'll get things polished up by the time they play the Lions and Packers again because those aren't going to be cakewalks at all. You already and the last time they played the Lions was a great football game. I think the teams um, have trended in opposite directions since that game, where the Lions really looking solid. You know, throw out what you saw in the first half of the uh, the game against the Texans, and you've seen the Vikings and Sam Darnold start to decline since there. So we'll see if they can shore things up and get back to the first few weeks performance that we we're used to seeing from the Vikings. Yeah, now I'm with you, Edge. Let's keep it moving along. Next up, we got the six and four Atlanta Falcons going off that that bad loss, that divisional okay. game to the, the Saints. And they're headed to the now five and five Denver Broncos. If I'm not wrong, Broncos have now lost three straight. Um, but they did keep this one close against the Chiefs. Um, honestly, Bo Nix played a lot better than I thought he would. Um, going over 200 passing yards, two TDs. Uh, holding the ball, but I mean, the Chiefs they continue to find ways to win games. Um, heading into this one, going into Denver, I'm still not sold on the Broncos, even though they looked pretty decent in that loss. I think this is a, a big bounce back game for Atlanta. I think they they really just dropped that one to the Saints in trap game sense, and I, I'm just, I think they're going to bounce back here. It's not a great matchup for Kirk in the passing offense, but I think they're able to rely on Dijon, Tyler Algier, and really run run the ball this game and kind of fall back into form from last year. But what are your thoughts? Yeah, with both teams losing tough losses this last week, it's there's not a lot of play and thinking that one team um, may be feeling comfortable and is maybe dropping a game where they otherwise would be looking ahead. You know, both these teams uh, could could use a win and a bounce back win at that. But I think the Broncos need it more. Well, we've seen the Falcons. They. S- there's no doubt that the Falcons are the more talented team in this matchup, especially when you look at what their offense has to offer. But we've seen this offense and look no further to the game against the Saints this last week. We've seen this Falcons offense struggle almost inexplicably, despite the talent they have. They have all these pieces and weapons they can use, but they don't always put together, especially when you're looking at a pretty staunch defense um, with the Broncos here, who are a top five unit. In again, look no further the way they played the Chiefs. They took one of the best offenses in football, or at least one of the most efficient offenses in football, and held them to only 16 points. It's really tough for me because I think the Broncos need this win so much more than the Falcons do. The Falcons are going to win this division uh, with the way that the Bucs have slid in, in their injuries. But the Broncos, we know it's going to the Chiefs at 9-0. They're really fighting for a playoff spot in this wild card. I think the, being the slight favorites is justified. Obviously, they're getting a little bit of help being at home. Uh, but I think I'm leaning towards the Broncos and riding with Bo Nix here. I think it's going to be an ugly game. And I have a hard time, honestly, seeing the Broncos win just because I know what the Falcons team can do. And when the Falcons... Their highs are highs, but their lows are lows. It's what kind of Falcons team you're going to get here. I think this Denver defense is going to keep them in it. And if Bo Nix can continue the level of play that he's doing, I've seen a lot of Cortland Sutton these last three weeks. I'd like to see keep that going. I think I want to take the Broncos to win this game. This is going to be it's a coin flip match. I think I'm signing with the better defense here and a little bit more of the desperation team given their record and their playoff hopes here. Yeah, I mean, the Broncos have – on a much further slide than uh, the Falcons are. I mean, if they're legit, they they need to come back and, and win this game here. I just – I'm not buying into it as well, much. It's, yeah, yeah, it's one of the games where the Falcons could just come out here and blow the roof off with the way their offense has. We've seen Kirk Cousins throw for 500 yards this season. So this offense has it in them. But then you see him do something like the Saints where 
just it, they're such a discombobulated offense. They're not really perceivably using their offense the right way or running the right calls. And you're wondering, well, how is this team only being held to like 17 points? It doesn't make too much sense given what they have. Uh, it's it's really. I think we know what we're going to expect out of the Broncos here. It's what is going to happen to the Falcons. And I think they're not going to show up. Then that's my prediction here. All right. Well, we'll check back in on that one yeah. next week. Yeah. Let's keep it moving. Got a handful of games still and approaching the end here. But we have another divisional matchup. Uh, seems to be a lot backloaded this year in the schedule. But now we have the 4-5 and five Seattle Seahawks. Another team coming off of a bye, and they're heading to San Francisco to play the now five and four Niners. Um, Niners just won in CMC's return uh, over the the Bucks. Bucks are beaten up, and I mean the Niners should have won that game by even more. Uh, all the issues with the kicking, uh, Debo getting into it with the long snapper, so not the best look over there in um, San Francisco. But they're still able to pull it out, getting a little bit healthier here. And they're coming in this game at just under a touchdown favorite. Uh, yeah, let's hear what you got to say first, Woj. I'm curious. I wonder if we're leaning the same way. Yeah, I have, not been, I have not been impressed with the 49ers at all this year. I really thought they had a chance to blow out a Bucks team that, while they were playing desperate football, they were coming off a really physical overtime loss against the Chiefs on Monday. So on a short week, and the Niners coming after – coming off a bye, getting CMC back, getting guys healthy. I thought they were going to take advantage of the matchup, and I did not see that, and it was a much closer game than I expected. I do think the Niners should win this game because I think the Seahawks are a lot different football team than we thought at the beginning of the season. I think we've seen some tangible holes in their game, and we've seen a drop-off in performance from Geno Smith. So I do think the Niners win this game, but with the way the Niners have been playing, even with getting guys like CMC back and Debo, I just can't trust this team to say I'm, I want them to cover six and a half. And now maybe this is me um, not buying low on the Niners. Maybe I should be buying low uh, with the way they've looked. But I think I'm on the Seahawks plus six and a half here off a of buy. We've seen Geno Smith's ability to put up a lot of yards. If he can cut off some of the turnovers that he has game after game, then the Seahawks have a chance to compete in this one. And you see a, a large total here at basically 50 points. I think you're going to see a lot of you know, the momentum that you saw Gino and Jackson Smith and Jake building off the last game they played. And I think you're going to see the Seahawks move the ball downfield vertically with their passing game. That's something that the Niners don't do as well. I could see this one being close, but ultimately the Niners win. But what do you have to say? Yeah, I mean, I think this game is going to be really close. Divisional mm -hmm. matchup. Um, always talk about how those are closer and just a little bit more prone for variability and Yep. How, how well the teams know each other. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm with the Seahawks here. I think off the bye, get the, the secondary a little bit healthier. Because, I mean, like we just saw with CMC, I mean, didn't look great running the ball. Um, he was more of a factor in the passing game. And, I mean, that's kind of leans into the Seahawks secondary. I mean, their real strength is their secondary. And I just think that coming off the bye, they'll have the right game plan to stay in this one plus six and a half. We saw how good they were at the start of the year. Um, did play some some better matchups then. But, yeah, I just don't think this is that bad of a football team to be plus six and a half um, mm -hmm. coming off the bye as well. Right. Uh, best matchup of the slate maybe the whole season this far. Got the, the 9-0 Chiefs going to play the now 8-2 Bills. Um, haven't really looked at the Chiefs schedule, but I feel like it's been a while since they've had a, a real test like this. Um, they won a close one against the Broncos, like we already talked about. The Bills, uh, they beat the Colts by 10 uh, on the road. I, even with Josh Allen kind of picking up on his turnovers lately, I thought they still mm -hmm. played really good. And just kind of showing him able to turn on a second level and kind of bring his team back into it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, going into this game, I just feel like it's only a matter of time before the Chiefs finally lose this season. And I just feel like Josh Allen and that offense – should have enough to just be able to create plays. I mean, we talked about him and James Cook all season. I just think they have enough playmakers to to outscore the Chiefs here. And games that always seem, seem super low scoring. Like, I don't know why you wouldn't take the under in every Chiefs game, especially in a four to six and a half point spread. But that's my thoughts on this one. Where are you leaning? No, I'm completely with you. It does seem like it's a time for the Chiefs to lose. They haven't been uh, tested, like I think this Bills game in quite a few weeks now. 
you've seen kind of the wear and tear that the the NFL season has had on this team. You know, really only being able to put up 16 points against the Broncos is a little telling. You know, the Chiefs team is no stranger to low offensive outputs and just playing really sound football and winning games. But I don't think that's going to fly in this game against the Bills as, you know, Josh Allen and the Bills are used to putting up 30 points a game. Uh, now, they're not going to eclipse that mark this game, just given how well the Chiefs defense has been playing. But I do think that the explosivity and the firepower that this Bills offense has been bringing week in and week out will be a little too much for the Chiefs. And I'm here on the Bills at home. And you know that stadium is going to be rocking against the Chiefs. You know, I'm sure that these guys are bitter rivals by now with the way a lot of these matchups have gone the past few years. And regular season or playoffs, it doesn't matter. I'm sure the Bills and their fan base are just um, teething at the mouth to beat the Chiefs any chance they can get. Yeah, no, I mean, this game's going to be awesome. Uh, but I'm I'm definitely with you. I just, the Chiefs are a great team, don't get me wrong, but they, the way they've been pulling these games out, it's it's got to be a matter of time before they pick up a loss. It'd probably be better for them in the long run, even. Mm-hmm. All right, so we've got three games left here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, this would be our Sunday night game, actually. Just got flexed. But we have the four and six Bengals going to play the now six and three Chargers. Harbaugh has done a, a wonderful job um, in L.A. in his first season, beating the Titans, picking up those games that you should win. And the Bengals lost another close one to the Ravens. Um, they're just about out of the race. But do you think the Bengals um, fight back and – try to find any way they hit the playoffs in this scenario or, or do you think the Chargers take care of them at home? Yeah, so there's two sides of this in my mind. One side is the Bengals need to get this win coming off a long week and they should beat this Chargers team. Uh, and that's ultimately where I'm going to land. So I think the Bengals need this win and they're going to. But this is a really tough matchup on paper if you're throwing out the circumstances from each team. Uh, the Chargers here – or one of the best teams defensively, certainly in a points per game aspect, but even overall PFF grade. And you saw them just this Sunday, seven sacks against the Titans. We've seen the Bengals have offensive line issues and really struggle to protect Joe Burrow. That's been one of the key themes throughout Joe Burrow's entire tenure and career with the Bengals. And if they can't slow down this Carter's pass rush, pass rush it's going to be a real tough time for the Bengals to win this football game especially against the Chargers defense that isn't allowing that many points to begin with. So the Bengals shoot themselves in the foot, fail to protect Joe Burrow, and get sacked and behind the sticks often. It's going to be really tough for them to win this game. And a Chargers team that isn't making many mistakes right now, they're playing really solid football and sticking to the run game and not having Justin Herbert do it all like we saw in the past under previous regimes. So I do think the Bengals are going to win this game, but it's not shocking to me at all that the Chargers are favored here. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Chargers won this game, given that I think they're – the much more fundamentally sound, balanced football team that relies on their defense here. The only reason I'm on the Bengals is because the Joe Burrow effect with Jamar Chase and the desperation that this team likely has in a long week of preparation that they have to think about the implication if they lose one more game this early in the season, what that means for their season. Um, I'm completely with you. Every every point there. I think Bengals, fully desperation pick, but almost all other reasons for me lean towards the Chargers. Mm-hmm. Um, just two games left uh, got to speed through them here and save a little bit more time for our better matchups but we got the four <laughs> and six Colts playing the three and seven Jets and I mean the Jets look bad in that loss to the Cardinals do you shut Aaron Rodgers down um, where do you go next if you're New York yeah it's really hard let me, go, let me go back to Zach Wilson I'm not sure but I definitely let the Colts plus three and a half here with the way these Jets look um I, I just don't know how you can rely on the Jets at all. They should win this game, and I think they will, but it seems like taking the spread against the Jets might be the move for the rest of the season because you just don't know which Aaron Rodgers is going to show up. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, still getting Flacco on that one. I'll take him for the beat-up Jets. And then our last game, Monday night here. Um, any reason you take the Cowboys without Dak? In this no, I mean, not based on what you just saw. They have no run game whatsoever, and now they have no pass game. They have no their defense isn't playing all that well, even with Micah Parsons back. How can you possibly look at the the Cowboys here and want to take them? I, I I don't know, and I will not be taking them until I prove it otherwise. I think you keep rolling with the Texans as Nico Collins should be back this game, looking to achieve even 